Um, one thing that I, I'd love for you to share more about, because I hear this from folks too, um, that, well, well, you know, though, Amy, you need to, you need to feel guilty. You need to feel shame about things or else, you know, the world go to hell in a handbasket. And I'm curious if you can kind of speak to that, like using that kind of really hard on yourself technique as a way to improve. Um, what, what do you see in that, in your own experience? I feel like it's really analogous to people who believe that fear is necessary to stay safe. Mm. Like people really value fear and they're like, my fear keeps me from doing blank. And I think that the fear thing or the guilt thing, I feel like it's so common. It's kind of like if everything was purple, nobody would know it was purple because it's like, what's purple? The whole thing of like, what doesn't know what water is a fish because it's all it's ever known. So we live in a world where guilt and fear are so ubiquitous and so common that people erroneously come to the conclusion that they're necessary. You are listening to What We Should Have Learned in School. So we live in a world where guilt and fear are so ubiquitous and so common that people erroneously come to the conclusion that they're necessary. While everyone's doing it, it's the world I grew up in. It's something I've potentially always experienced. Therefore, it has to be here. And it's interesting because, you know, with the guilt or with the fear thing, I don't feel like those are really different at all. Um, You can stay safe, you can pursue goals, you can embrace things you love because you love them, not because you're afraid of losing them Mm -hmm. or you feel guilty of not doing enough. It's like, it's a slight pivot, but it's a pivot between a really, it's like the, it's like the failure thing, you know, guilt, failure, fear. It's these negative, just kind of bully boogeyman concepts that we carry around and we think that they are pushing us forward. But the reality is if we are functioning, if we are producing, if we are living an open, creative, joyous life, we're doing that despite those things. Because fear and guilt and failure and all that stuff, those are not, those are not equals or those are not, you know, components of success. Does that make sense? Yeah, I mean, fundamentally, they're they're concepts. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, they're 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 thoughts, they're ideologies, and and it's like it's so amazing to me that when you start to become aware of something like concept in your life, thought, belief, childhood belief. Um, like I've lived outside of my own culture now for many many years. I've lived outside of the U.S. predominantly for over five six years, and I've lived in five different countries. So you, you start to get a little bit of perspective of what your water is, kind of the Kool-Aid that you're drinking as a culture. Mm-hmm. And you start to realize it's not necessarily something to, to say, oh, this is so bad or, or blame or point a finger at. It's just one way of being in the world. You start to see that this is not an objectively true thing that we're all buying into right now. So for me, it's always looking more like, okay, well, what? What's actually neutral about my experience, which actually a little bit more scientific, of course, I'm going to have emotions, but can we pare that down to basic principles of, of being human that, that, mm-hmm. that, that expand across gender and expand across culture? It's, it's interesting to me too, like human choice, I think is another one of those, you know, water things where, because ver- I mean, everything that we do is a choice. It's a matter of whether or not it's a consciously chosen choice or it's an unconsciously driven choice. It's still a choice that we make. And when you were talking about singing and people, and I had a similar thing with music where people are like, oh, you you don't get to be that thing. Like you're not, you know, Frank Sinatra or insert whatever thing here. Thinking that that person was born some special magical unicorn person as opposed to somebody that had a capacity and for whatever reason had the circumstances that supported the pursuit of that thing. And it's interesting because it's it's fascinating to me how many things in the world aren't working the way most people would want them to. 
And I get it. It's, it's challenging because no one person can change the world, but through more people making constructive, supportive, loving choices than those making destructive, fearful, diminishing choices. Like that's the way the world changes. And it's, it's interesting because the power of human choice is so radical and so profound. And again, so ubiquitous, that it's easy to overlook and it's easy to think like that's not special, but you know, the failure, the fear thing, the guilt thing, choosing, and again, it's, it's an unconscious choice in most instances, people don't realize that there is the option to opt out of guilt and fear and failure and all that stuff. But even that's a choice. So it's like people too frequently, I think, are making unconscious choices and then because they don't realize they have choice, feeling like they're a victim to circumstances and to the world being cruel and all of this stuff. And it's just, it's fascinating to me too, because I think a lot about language and words and kind of, I look for subtle differences and shifts and concepts. And like, I feel like a lot of times, mm, people without realizing it kind of conflate concepts like life and the world where life is more analogous to existence, but the world is something that we have, human beings have collectively created over the course of you know, millennia. So it's interesting hearing people say like, if it was a perfect world or if the world blah, 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 blah. Um, I think they say that without a realization that they not only in a small way are contributing to the creation of that, but they also, in a pretty radical way, have the ability to have a big impact on their circle and their community and like create ripples in their, their experiences through their choices that potentially, in the same way that people are looking around and seeing a bunch of people making fearful choices and a bunch of people believing in failure and they're like, that must be real because all these people believe it and they start adopting it and then perpetuating that cycle Another option is making more intentional choices and really doing the hard work of showing up. And do you know Brene Brown? Have you read her stuff? Uh, I, I, I've watched a couple of her TED Talks. Okay. <laughs> I took the cheat. Like, <laughs> yeah. yeah, she has a book called um, Daring Greatly that's really phenomenal. And it's, it's all about, like her research is so centered around vulnerability and how that is the, that is the, basic foundation of intimacy and that whole book is about you know her research of this thing that is so fundamental and so simple but so scary and so difficult to practice and maintain like staying vulnerable mm -hmm. staying open um so it's certainly not an easy thing to just like you know choose courage ch choose more openly choose to like be loving and, and embracing of things but it, it really is a choice. If you're liking where this conversation is going, I highly recommend the other episodes that I did with Ryan. I'm going to put a link to those below in the show notes. In part one, we talked about how life actually is not a test. It's not a test that you can fail. And in part three, we talk about how there's really no value in blame and how we can begin to live more courageously. So if that interests you, I highly recommend to check out the other interviews with Ryan.